with the battle of mankind. Here we go. First of all, we're off to Ethiopia. We have so many discoveries, and the very well-known discoveries in the world is that we call her Denkanashin Ethiopian or Lucy, uh, and she was 3.2 million years before, and then she gave many information to what is about human evolution. She was very short about one meter and ten centimeter and her brain size was very small she had an arch in the middle of her feet that one is she had shock absorber she was walking properly and then after they discovered her they were listening the beatles song and given the name to her lucy lucy in the sky if you remember this song. Okay, so 1969, Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds. And uh, what they found in Ethiopia was the first uh, animal to walk on two feet. Animal, obviously, uh, when I say animal, it is your great, 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 great grandmother. Um, okay. So um, from Lucy with her small brain size to the United Nations, no, uh, no pun or linking uh, intended, but as well as passing resolutions uh, on a daily basis against Israel, the United Nations actually does some useful stuff as well. For example, it um, designates world heritage uh, sites across the world, which are sites of outstanding universal value to humanity and as such, um, should be protected and the United Nations provides money to protect and develop uh, the said sites. There are about 1,200 uh, spread across the world and Israel has seven. And if I asked you what um, they are, you'd probably tell me, oh, Jerusalem, and you'd be right. You'd probably tell me Masada and you'd be right as well. You'd probably tell me lots of other sites and you, in fact, you wouldn't be right because although they may be very important to us, they're not actually uh, unique to mankind. So the other sites, apart from the two that I mentioned, are the Baha'i temples, the biblical tells such as Hatzor, Megiddo, Tel Sheva, the uh, incense roots in the desert, Akko, Tel Aviv, interesting why Tel Aviv is there, but that's not the subject for tonight, Marasha, which is Bet Guvrin, and Bet Sharim, the uh, catacombs there. And the other one is Nachal Ma'arot. Nachal Ma'arot, I hear you say. Where is that? What is that? Okay, so Nachal Ma'arot um, is found on uh, Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel actually has 210 prehistoric sites, most of which are actually caves that were, found, that were formed by uh, carstification, which um, is a process. Uh, remember, of course, that, that at one time, the whole of this planet was covered by the sea. And um, carstification uh, is a process whereby water reacts with carbon dioxide, forms carbonic acid, which dissolves out uh, the uh, calcium carbonate, which is limestone rock, and provides caves, and, and produces caves, sorry. And Mount Carmel has many, many caves, 210 of them, but four of these caves form the site which is known as Nahama Rod, and these were excavated in the 1930s, and these caves were listed as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 2012, which means they must be pretty significant. So well, actually there's three unique points of significance of these caves. So first of all, um, the archeologists excavated 20 meters of depth. And what they found was 500,000 years of remnants of human civilization, which is a, a longer time span than has been found in any other prehistoric site. Okay, that's number one, that's the first significant point. Uh, by the way, if we're looking at the main time span that um, our ancient ancestors lived on the Carmel, we're talking um, the main period between 80 and 40,000 years ago, when man lived in these caves and they lived an existence which is known as hunter-gatherers, namely, they lived a pretty solitary existence. And when man was hungry, 
he would go out to hunt and he would eat what he uh, managed to kill. Obviously, it was a pretty uh, dangerous existence and uh, uh, lifespan was, was pretty short. Um, the second significant point of Nachal Ma'arot was the Natufian culture, which is very recent. It was only 10 to 12, 12 to 10,000 years ago. And this is the first culture which actually involved fixed settlement, meaning that hunter-gatherers all the time they moved around, okay? They went where the food was, they left areas that they'd existed, um, that they'd exhausted the food supply, but the Natufians, they were actually able to grow food. So they were able to cult cultivate crops and they were able to successfully breed domestic animals. So that's two points of significance. But the main point that I wanted to speak of uh, tonight is this area. So you see the, the 20 meters here. Area C corresponds to the uh, Musterian level. I won't ask you to repeat that afterwards. And it uh, corresponds to a period of 70 to 40,000 years ago, which is known as the Middle Paleolithic period, which is the period pre-Stone Age. And there the excavators found the skeleton of a Neanderthal woman. They've also found skeletons um, within this period that were, uh, they also found hum uh, Homo sapiens, which is what we are. We are Homo sapiens. And they found in the same period, they found a Neanderthal woman, which meant that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens existed in the same place at the same period of time, which was a very remarkable um, discovery. And that's the third point of, the, of significance. So who were these Neanderthals? So we, we met Lucy 3.2 million years ago, 700,000 years ago in Africa, there, they've, we've, they've, they've been found a species known as Homo erectus, and uh, Homo sapiens developed from Homo erectus, and indeed Neanderthals also developed from Homo erectus. So where did Homo sapiens and Neanderthals um, diverge on the evolutionary tree? Well, that happened about 300,000 years ago. Homo sapiens stayed in Africa, whilst Neanderthals were uh, mainly found living in um, the primitive place of Europe or Eurasia, which stretches from uh, Spain to Siberia. And um, where are these Neanderthals now? I don't see them knocking around Natanya. No, I really don't see them knocking around Natanya. So Neanderthals became extinct. The last Neanderthals that have been found, okay, the most, the newest Neanderthals, the ones that were between 40, about 37,000 years ago, 37,000 years old, have been found in Gibraltar. So it seems like Neanderthals were driven to the very edges of Europe and were driven to extinction. Um, so, okay, so what did they look like, these Neanderthals? So these are the Neanderthals. So they had a low skull, no developed chin. They were short, okay? They, they, they weren't that short. They weren't as short as Lucy. Remember we said Lucy was about 1.1 meters high, but the Neanderthals were 1.5 to 1.75 meters. There are humans today that are, are that high, not me. Um, but they, are, they were shorter than the average humans, but they had very well-developed muscles and large bones. So despite the fact that they were shorter, they probably weighed about the same as the, the average human that lived at the same time. Um, if you look at them, you might like to say, well, we had you know, humans much bigger brains. Well, we didn't have bigger brains. Brain size was about the same, but I'll, I'll refer in a minute. There were differences in the brains, but the brain size was the same. And um, although, okay, they may look a bit more monkeyish than us, the Neanderthals were not stupid. So they had stone technology. Okay, they were stone age. They knew how to um, they knew how to develop weapons from stones. They hunted, and they hunted very well. They had well developed. Um, they, didn't move, they couldn't move very fast. So they had big muscles, large bones. They couldn't move fast, but they were very strong. And they also knew how to use fire as well. And they also, they, they had some um, culture between them as well. So in another cave called the Kabara cave, which is also on the Carmel, they have found um, Neanderthals there as well that were buried. So they had burial rites, meaning they, they had culture similar to human beings. And as I mentioned, they went extinct somewhere between 40 to 32,000 years ago. 
Okay, so what caused them to become extinct? Of course, we had something to do with it. So there are um, several theories. Okay, so humans being became better hunters. So there was competition for food. We were better hunters and we um, exhausted the food so that Neanderthals had nothing to eat anymore. Maybe true, but remember that I said that although Neanderthals couldn't move very fast, they were um, much stronger than humans. So maybe yes, maybe no. Second theory is that humans violently conquered um, when they moved out of Africa. So we moved, we, the Neanderthals existed as long as humans were in Africa. Humans moved out of Africa and they killed all of all the Neanderthals. And if you look at what we've, humans have done wherever they've gone, so we've killed lions, we've killed tigers, well, whatever. So it wouldn't be, um, it, it's a pretty reasonable um, theory that we would kill a species that is not the same as us. Okay, the another theory is that there was a volcanic eruption. So there's very good evidence for a massive volcanic eruption near Naples in 39,000 BCE, about the same time that we think that the Neanderthals went extinct. The um, volcanic ash would have blocked the sun. It would cause acid rain, and that would have completely wiped out the Neanderthals. Why weren't we affected by that? Because we were in Africa. And um, after the Neanderthals became extinct, we moved into areas that they had left vacant in Europe. Okay, another theory was there were three groups around, uh, you know, around 40,000 BCE. There were three main groups of, there were humans, there were Neanderthals and there were wolves. The humans formed an alliance with the wolves and um, killed all the Neanderthal. Another theory was that we had more culture. So um, we were better at um, making tools, better at making weapons. We were better hunter-gatherers. And after a, a, a period of evolutionary time, again, competition over food caused the Neanderthal to become extinct. Um, Another, also uh, another theory was division of labor. So the Neanderthals, they all hunted, uh, men, women, and, uh, but we didn't do that. We, um, the men went out hunting. We left the women at home in the kitchen uh, to do the cooking. And um, over a period of time, we started eating um, plants as well. And this variety of food gave us an evolutionary edge over the Neanderthal. And, and both of these theories, number five and number six, had something to do with the differences in our brain. So I mentioned that Neanderthals and humans had similar brain size, but the Neanderthals had a much smaller frontal lobe. So most of the Neanderthals brain was um, used to control their large muscles, their large bones. The frontal lobe is what um, controls our cognitive thoughts, okay? It enables me to, 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 um, uh, to think, to speak, to um, put over this lecture, to, I don't know, to design, uh, to discover Facebook. Neanderthals weren't in that category. And again, over a period of time that enabled humans to develop culture and, and, enable, and basically gave them an advantage which again um, gave an, a, a, an evolutionary advantage over the Neanderthal. Number eight um, is weather change. So um, 45,000 years ago was close to the last ice age. Humans who came and the ice age destroyed all the forests in Eurasia. Humans were more used to the open plains of Africa. They moved faster than Neanderthals. The Neanderthals were strong, but Neanderthals needed those forests to creep up on uh, mammoths and kill them. And without the forests, the Neanderthals uh, couldn't hunt well, and that's why they became extinct. Okay, all that was an introduction. Um, number nine, okay, number nine uh, was that humans brought disease from Africa. So humans, we know Captain Cook went around Asia. He wiped out and his uh, sailors, they wiped out the Polynesians through disease. And when Europeans discovered America, 90% uh, of Native Americans were also wiped out through herpes, through smallpox, um, through disease that was brought by the Europeans and they didn't have the immune system to cope with it. And number 10, was that the Neanderthals became extinct through assimilation. Okay, they bred, there was breeding between Neanderthal and 
um, Homo sapiens, between Neanderthal and humans, and this led the Neanderthals to become extinct. Okay, and if you think that is a far-fetched theory, I'm sorry to tell you that all of us actually have Neanderthal DNA within us. So 1.5 to 2.1% of our DNA is, um, and obviously we know this because all the gene, the human genotype and has been analyzed, and Neanderthal, um, from, from uh, Neanderthal DNA has also been analyzed. And as I mentioned, about 2% of our DNA actually comes from Neanderthal, and it controls all kinds of different things, like um, hype gives us a tendency to depression, addiction to tobacco. Really? We can blame that on Neanderthal? Wow. Um, urinary, urinary tract disorders, malnutrition, hypercoagulation, we can all blame that on our ancient ancestors who bred with the Neanderthal. By the way, the, if you look at the Neanderthal DNA within us, it is, although it's 2% within us, it's a, a different 2% in all kinds of different people. So about 20% of the original Neanderthal DNA has been uh, retained and is contained in all humans apart from one type of human. And there's a prize for anyone that can tell me who, who that human is. Um, and uh, last of all, we'll leave it to uh, Gerald to wrap this up. Can Gerald really speak as we would understand it? Oh yes, 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 I mean he can speak a few actual words. Of course it was extremely difficult to get him even to this stage. Um, <laughs> when I first, uh, when I first captured Gerald in the Congo, I'm 67 I think it was, I... 68. <laughs> 68. 68. Um, there was an awful lot of work to do. He was enormously slow and difficult. I had to do a lot of work with him on a sort of one-to-one -one basis. Yes. Can I just butt in at this point, Tim? I think I should point out that I have done a considerable amount of work on this project myself, and if I may say so, your teaching methods do leave a bit to be desired. <laughs> and your, your diction, for instance, is I'm not sorry, really I'm sorry, can I put this into some sort of perspective? When I caught Gerald in 68, he was completely wild. Wild? I was absolutely livid. I mean, <laughs> was... <laughs> well, clearly, all that's changed now. Yes. Yeah, because, yeah. of course, you've been brought up in, in the professor's own house. Yes, he's living with me. Though not in the biblical sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to ask you, actually. Sexual voice. Gerald, do, do you have a mate? Yeah, I've got lots of mates. Um, there's, the, uh, there's the professor, there's uh, his son Toby, there's, uh, there's Raymond next door. Well, no, actually... Oh, I see. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, crumpet. Crumpet. <laughs> <laughs>